What do you do with terrible tragedy when life throws seemingly insurmountable challenges at you? Do you let the experience consume you until you turn to a life of evil? Or do you use that and the feelings it conjures up as a driver for good? Which dog do you choose to feed? How do you process those echoes of the past? Let's talk about Marvel's Maya Lopez Echo. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our weekly content. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into our story. Co-created by Joe Quesada and David Mack, Echo made her debut in 1999's Daredevil Volume 2 with issue number 9. In fact, in Marvel Fact Files 38, it says that Quesada invited Mack to contribute to the Marvel Knights imprint, and it was then that he introduced Echo while also flushing out its crime noir feel for the Daredevil book. So who is this Echo? Echo's father, Crazy Horse, moved to New York City, and there he went into business with a massive and terrible kingpin named Wilson Fisk. There, Crazy Horse fathered a child with an unnamed woman. This girl, named Maya Lopez, was born deaf but gifted with photographic reflexes which allowed her to perfectly replicate any action after seeing it only once. It allowed her to become proficient with anything from ninja weapons and martial arts fighting styles to things like playing a piano, flying a plane, or firing a weapon. She was also an expert lip reader and knows both Indian and American Sign Language. She studied the fighting styles of people like Daredevil and Bullseye quite a bit, picking up the idiosyncrasies of those unique movements for herself. Maya's mother did not approve of Crazy Horse's ties to the criminal underworld, and so she left when Maya was still very, very young, leaving Crazy Horse alone to raise his daughter as best he could, given they lived in a milieu full of crime. One day, when Maya was just nine years old, Wilson Fisk murdered Crazy Horse right in front of Maya, and as he died with Maya at his side, he reached out to touch his daughter, and in doing so, left a bloody handprint on her face. One of his last wishes was to ensure that Maya Lopez would be cared for, so Wilson took this newly orphaned girl and sent her to a private school. Their private school teacher, named Miss Diener, took the class to a classical performance by a piano player, and when Maya replicated the song after hearing it just one time, Wilson Fisk realized her abilities, so he took her out of that school and sent her to another school for child prodigies. At this new school, Maya's skill qualified her for the Special Olympics, and she won thrice. She also eagerly watched Grace Kelly movies to pick up her dance moves, as well as training with a sensei who schooled her in the martial arts and the history of the hand. Maya took her skills one day and performed Liberace in front of a live audience that also happened to include Wilson Fisk. She then fought and won a boxing match while using her father's name of Crazy Horse. After the boxing match, Fisk called Maya to him, saying that her father would have been proud, and then he asked Maya to do him a favor. Fisk told her that there was this attorney from Hell's Kitchen named Matt Murdock who thought Fisk was bad and so he asked Maya to confront Murdock for him. So Maya went to the offices of Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson, and there she tinkered around playing with Matt's piano, and she ended up inviting Murdock to her performance later that evening. Later that same day, while practicing at recital for that evening's performance, Wilson came to Maya. Maya asked Wilson about her father again, and Fisk lied, saying that Daredevil was the one responsible for her father's death, and that he died trying to save Fisk's life. Fisk then took out a handgun and handed it to Maya, telling her it was the very weapon that struck down her father many years before. Now, with her new mission solidified, though based on lies, Maya rewrote her performance, instead opting to tell the tale of her Cheyenne Native American heritage, a tale she called Echo. That night, she performed this new Echo play with a white handprint painted onto her face to symbolize her father's bloody hand. The next day, she vowed she would go after Daredevil, and she would call herself Echo. After studying those Daredevil bullseye tapes, Maya went out and met up with Matt Murdock over some coffee. Maya and Matt talked for hours that day, walking in a park, having dinner together, and just generally enjoying their time with each other, even as Maya talked favorably about Wilson Fisk. Maya and Matt ended up kissing and closed the evening out at a jazz club. After the veritable first date was over, Maya went back home, donned a new costume, painted the handprint back on her face, armed herself with throwing stars and a club, and then went out to attack Daredevil while also carrying that handgun she thought he'd used against her father. At this point, Echo had no idea that Matt Murdock was indeed Daredevil. Echo and Daredevil fought each other furiously, their acrobatics setting them across rooftops as they danced their martial arts dance across the skyline of New York City. After wounding Daredevil and with an audience of civilians gathering around, Maya left the fight. That night, she saw in the news that Wilson Fisk had been shot, and she also saw Matt Murdock holding a gun in his hands. The next day, Maya and Matt met again for a second date at the same park she'd visited as a child. And later still, Maya tranquilized Black Widow and attacked Daredevil again, but this time he was able to defeat her by knocking out the lights and preventing her from seeing where he could use his echolocation to see just fine. Maya was distraught and set fire to the playground at the park she'd visited with Matt Murdock. 
After bringing Black Widow for treatment, Daredevil then went to the park and saw the fire and realized that the smoke and the noise had dulled his senses, and this leveled out the playing field as Echo and Daredevil battled once more. But then Maya saw Daredevil's wounds, and she realized that Daredevil was Matt Murdock, just as she also realized now that Matt Murdock would have been too young to kill her father, and so that story was a lie, and she now knew the true answer. Maya found a wounded kingpin and shot him, blinding him and seriously wounding him in the process, as revenge for killing her father. And then knowing that she'd be in grave danger, Maya left town. And out of New York and on her own, Maya traveled the world, visiting museums of history and art along the way, renewing her passion and her love for the arts in the process. At one point, though, Maya decided to go back to New York City to visit Matt Murdock. She wanted to be with him again, but when she met up with Matt, Matt said that he had a new girlfriend and it was best if she wasn't around. So Maya left Matt and instead went to Wilson Fisk, who was now in a prison. Fisk told Maya that he loved her in his own way and that yes, he had lied, and it was indeed him who'd killed Maya's father, Crazy Horse, and that was all she needed to hear. Maya immediately got up and left and found her way back to the Native American reservation that her father had come from. And there she met a medicine man who sent Maya out on a vision quest, a journey to find herself. Out in the wilderness, Maya eventually crossed paths with an X-Man named Wolverine. Echo and Wolverine fought briefly before sitting down to chat. And in their talk, Wolverine helped Maya remember a story her father had once told her, that there was once a man with two dogs inside of himself. One dog was good, and one dog was evil. And this man had to choose which of these dogs to feed. This inspired Maya to feed the proverbial good dog, and so she went back to New York City and decided to do something in the arts, and so she opened new shows like The Echo Story and Parts of a Hole. At one of these shows, Echo saw Matt Murdock in the crowd and, in a full circle moment, kissed him and bid him farewell. But not forever. Maya studied the hand and the Yakuza more and through this work ended up working with Daredevil more. In fact, it was Daredevil who gave Echo's name to Captain America as a recommendation for a good agent to investigate how Silver Samurai was tied to the hand and to Yakuza. Reluctantly, partly due to her past ties to Kingpin, Captain America agreed. And so for this mission, Echo donned a new uniform and took on the nom de guerre of Ronin. And as Ronin, Maya continued to look into the underworld for ties to Silver Samurai. So Maya as Ronin headed to Japan where she disguised herself as a club kid in the nightclubs of the Shinjuku district in Tokyo. This was to hide the fact that she was also now Ronin, whispered about in crime circles as the scourge of the underworld. Ronin earned this nickname from her savage, brutal takedowns of the Japanese mafia. And as she caught her bloody swath through the underworld, Ronin made her way to the Yashida Citadel, home of the Silver Samurai, where she saw a Silver Samurai beating with Hydra and Madam Hydra. And then a ferocious fight ensued with Ronin in the hand. Ronin managed to escape and she went to a Stark building in Osaka, Japan to link up with Captain America, Iron Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, and Luke Cage. Ronin said she was sorry she failed them and asked for their help just as she was assaulted from behind by an invading hand force. They all linked up and fought back against the hand, defeating them and taking down Madame Hydra in the process. They were then able to settle things with Silver Samurai, so Ronan and the Avengers took Madame Hydra as prisoner on a Quinjet, heading back to New York, but mid-flight, Madame Hydra escaped on an airlock. Ronan had once saw Iron Man fly the Quinjet, and so her photographic memory enabled her to fly the plane, even with a blown airlock. Ronan flew the plane all the way back to New York City, and when they landed, Ronan pulled off her mask and revealed herself as Echo to Iron Man. She said she'd used her skill set for good and that she'd take care of Japan, protecting it. This impressed Iron Man enough that she was considered for recruitment to the initiative by Tony Stark during the first Civil War. While Civil War raged in America, Ronin continued to take on the hand as the scourge of the underworld in Japan. During one mission, Ronin fought with a hand, but Elektra impaled Ronin right through the chest with one of her sighs and killed Ronin. But then Elektra used the beast, demon of the hand, to power a spell to bring Maya back from the dead back to life, which she'd hoped would sway Maya to their evil side. And that's when the Avengers rolled up to help her. Since Echo was poisoned though, the Avengers took her to Silver Samurai where Doctor Strange worked on nursing her back to health, even as the hand again attacked Clan Ishida. In the battle, Elektra got a hold of and control of Echo, whom she immediately turned against her own friends in the Avengers. But Doctor Strange was able to free her from Elektra's control with one of his spells. Free of the spell, Echo attacked Elektra and killed Elektra with a sword right through the chest. And as she died, Elektra revealed her true self. She was a scroll. After that ordeal, Echo and the Avengers left Japan and headed back to New York, suddenly realizing the insidious threat that the scrolls now posed. Mid-flight, the plane lost power and they lost Spider-Woman and the Skrull corpse in the process. In New Avengers issue 33, Echo went to the Sanctum Sanctorum to meet up with Doctor Strange, Wong, Jessica Jones, Danielle Cage, and Hawkeye, whom she gave the Ronin identity to, saying she no longer had a use for it. 
Doctor Strange then cast a spell which forced everyone in the room to reveal their true selves. In other words, he was looking for pod people scrolls. Echo told them that it was Daredevil who'd inspired her to become a hero. So the team went to Avengers Tower, but on the way there, they ran into the Venom symbiotes, and they themselves were changed when a symbiote bomb exploded. The Venomized Avengers ended up battling with the pro-registration Mighty Avengers until the symbiote effects wore off. Echo was still with the Avengers as they battled the Hood and Hood's army, including a Deathlock cyborg and Madam Mask. During the World War Hulk event, Echo was with the team as they debated whether or not to kill Hulk in his warbound. And at the Sanctum Sanctorum, Echo, Iron Fist, Hawkeye Ronin fought Elo and Heroim, but they lost and were stuck with obedience discs, which allowed them to be controlled as well. But afterward, they were okay and free of the discs, and Echo was even there when damage control showed up to clean up the mess that Hulk and his warbound had made. And then back at the Sanctum Sanctorum, Night Nurse worked on Echo's wounds, but when the Hood and his forces attacked yet again, Griffin further wounded Echo. And so, with her wounded and off the table, it was up to Doctor Strange and his spells to repel Hood's army. And then to hide out, away from the Sanctum Sanctorum because it could be attacked again, Iron Fist let them use one of the leader's old apartment safe houses. When she was well enough, Echo then went out on patrol and ran into a scroll version of Daredevil that Wolverine had to help her defeat. Wolverine said this scroll was going to take over her body to further infiltrate the Avengers, but they stopped it from happening. So Echo went back to the Avengers and after chatting with Hawkeye, ended up sleeping with Clint. In another story, a World War II era team of superheroes called the Invaders made their way to the present time and were arrested by the mighty Avengers. So Spider-Man had come to Echo and the Avengers team to tell them that this had happened. The Avengers then went out to see what was going on, but Echo stayed behind with Doctor Strange and was there when Strange realized that a cosmic cube was being used to alter history. When part of the team got back with part of the invaders, Strange and Echo told them about this greater threat. Later, in tunnels under Manhattan, Echo searched for the team as she saw Wolverine, Iron Fist, Doctor Strange, Bucky, Ronan, Toro, Paul Ansel, who was another guy from the 1940s, imprisoned by the demon Despair, the same demon who was using the Cosmic Cube. Echo wasn't affected by the demon though since she was unable to hear. So Echo grabbed the Cosmic Cube from Despair and gave it to Doctor Strange who used it to defeat the demon. They then used it to send everybody back to their proper place in the timeline. Needing some rest, Maya then hung out with the Avengers back at the safe house for a little downtime in R&R &R, which included playing video games. During an event called Secret Invasion, a Skrull space vessel crashed in the Savage Land, so Spider-Woman called Echo and the Avengers for aid. The Avengers stole a Quinjet and flew to the Savage Land, ultimately crashing in that wild land. But the mighty Avengers showed up to arrest them all, and the fight was cut short as Jarvis revealed himself as a Skrull as well. So a battle broke out with the Avengers and the Skrulls. Spider-Woman also revealed herself finally as a Skrull, and she attacked and knocked Echo out before leaving. Both Avengers teams then paired up to get back to New York on the one good remaining Quinjet. And when they got back to New York, they saw that the Skrulls had invaded the city, so they immediately went to work fighting back against the Skrull invaders. Echo was with the Avengers after the Skrull's secret invasion and even saw Hawkeye getting back together with his ex-wife, Mockingbird, to her disappointment, since she had slept with Clint not too long ago. Much later though, Luke Cage and Jessica Jones reached out to Maya to see if she would become their daughter Danielle's nanny, but this did nothing but annoy Echo. Maya's next mission took her to California to infiltrate Count Nefaria's criminal network. She got a job as a stripper at a nightclub owned by Snapdragon, but when Moon Knight came in he was shot, Maya was forced to break her cover to get Snapdragon off of Moon Knight and get him to safety. Maya then phoned the Avengers back on the East Coast and asked them what was up with this Moon Knight guy. So Miss Marvel reassured her that, crazy as he may be, Moon Knight was one of the good guys. Satisfied, Maya linked back up with Moon Knight, even as a group called Night Shift attacked. In this fight, Echo grabbed TikTok's weapon and shot Macabre with it, and then knocked out a guy calling himself Needle. The cops surrounded Echo and Moon Knight, and one of them tased her, but she fought back, stole a police car, and then met up with Moon Knight again. Together, they ditched the police car, and Moon Knight kissed Echo, but instead of kissing him back, she punched him. Despite that, she went with him back to his mansion, and there she admitted that the kiss wasn't entirely offensive and unwanted, it was just unexpected. Maya then used Mark Spector's shower to clean up, and when she got out, she was surprised to see that the Avengers were there at the mansion, requesting he give back a Ultron head that he had at the house. Moon Knight and Echo then resumed their fight against Count Nefaria and Snapdragon. As Echo observed Mark Spector, she realized that he was hearing voices that weren't there and he was talking to himself. Shortly after this, a guy named Buck Lime installed a strip of vibranium in Echo's bow staff, which made it incredibly strong. She used it to go after Count Nefaria even more, ultimately deciding to kiss Moon Knight back. But in Moon Knight issue 9, it wasn't enough. Count Nefaria shot Echo with his weapon and the blast shot right through her torso, killing her. And as she lay dead in the street, Moon Knight finished off Count Nefaria. 
Right after this, Madame Mass broke in during Echo's autopsy and stole her staff with the vibranium in it. Somehow, Echo is back to life as we see her right next to Blind Al during a roast of Deadpool in 2015's Deadpool issue 45, right before Secret Wars. In 2016, Maya was in Hell's Kitchen at a rock concert when everybody was turned to zombies with this sonic weapon. Maya was unaffected though due to her hearing complications, and she reached out to Daredevil, discovered Claw was behind it, and created a counter frequency that they blasted over the emergency broadcast system to turn everybody from zombie back to human again. This served as a reuniting of sorts with the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, and they worked together to take down gangs while Maya continued to learn Daredevil's unique fighting style. They both teamed up with Luke Cage to take on the Munition Militia, and then teamed up with Jessica Drew, White Tiger, Misty Knight, Colleen Wing, Elektra, and Black Cat to fight against Moonstone, Diamondback, Titania, and Fixer. And again, they worked together as they took on the Hood once more. Echo also helped the team take on Kingpin, who managed to take back his power in the city. They were briefly remanded to Rikers Island during this story, but were freed after Matt Murdock became mayor of New York, and so out again they had to fight against the Hand, who'd used that opportunity to invade. In another volume of Captain Marvel, Echo had a new costume and brandished a large katana. This was around the time that Nuclear Man attacked New York and imprisoned a bunch of people, including Echo, so she had to team up with Spider Woman, Som, and Hazmat to escape. And together as an underground resistance force, they spent time fighting Nuclear Man's forces and rescuing civilians, even teaming up with Captain Marvel to save a lady named Ripley Ryan, a lady who would later become the costumed fighter Star. They all then teamed up with Jennifer Walter She-Hulk to fight with Nuclear Man's guards, the Metal Men. After Nuclear Man captured Captain Marvel in the Citadel, Echo led the counterattack against him and now Rogue too. After they defeated Nuclear Man, Echo joined the Daughters of Liberty and other heroes to find a way to break Captain America out of jail, and when they freed him, Captain America asked them for their help. So working with Captain America, Echo went to a bar and took down a gang of watchdogs with a sonic attack, and then took them all down in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And then Captain America and White Tiger then showed up to help her out, and they ultimately found an AIM stronghold, where they had to fight against a lady named Sin, as well as rescue some immigrants from human traffickers. And later, Echo, Spider-Woman, and the Daughters of Liberty took on somebody who had picked up the mantle of Scourge. Echo later was helping Captain Marvel in Cleveland by aiding Kree refugees by getting them to safety inside of Singularity. In a book called Marvel's Voices, Indigenous Voices, Loki disguised as Captain Marvel took Echo off of Earth to another planet, saying that the pacifist Badoon living there needed her help fighting a swamp monster. So Echo ended up fighting with Sarl the Slaughterer, a villain who enslaved women and forced them to fight as gladiators. After that fight and some time around a campfire, Echo went back to Earth and found Loki, who told her she was now ready for what comes next. Echo then teamed up with the Daughters of Liberty to take on the Black Box. And then, in Avengers 40, Echo was one of the heroes who'd been gathered up by the Phoenix Force as a potential host. Echo and Namor were both given a piece of the Phoenix Force and forced to fight each other underwater. Namor seemingly defeated Echo, but the Phoenix Force picked Echo as the host, and the Phoenix Force imbued Echo with all of its powers, and so she rose up out of the water before drowning, defeated Namor, and then changed her name to Thunderbird. She drew all of the Phoenix Force from all of the other contestants into herself. And then Echo awoke at the Ravencroft Institute and realized that she controlled the Phoenix Force and that reality had been altered. Captain America and Blade came to Echo to help her set reality back to status quo. So she left Ravencroft with them and also recruited Thor before joining the Avengers to fight with the Squadron Supreme and Mephisto and ultimately set reality back to normal. After that ordeal, Echo was overwhelmed about her time with the Phoenix Force and so she stayed at Avengers Mansion while she healed physically and mentally. She was terrified of herself and what she could do, the damage she could cause. But it was Robbie Reyes, the Ghost Rider, who convinced Echo that she could use her power and her experiences for good. And so, at a symbolic moment, she ate a cheeseburger, feeding the good dog, if you will. And so Echo was accepted back to the Avengers team, and there she continues with the Avengers as we move into the future. And with that, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this every week. I'm Jesse, and I'll see you soon.